Okay, let's take a look. This actually is pretty similar to question 39, if you observe. It's very similar. The only difference is this negative out in front, um, and that's really the only difference. So let's just see how that impacts it. So I'm gonna treat it very much the same as I treated 39, um, which is I'm gonna first, I like don't, I just don't like this negative right here. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna move all this junk down here. It's a little neater. Ooh, that didn't work at all. It's not any neater at all. Let's try this again. Okay, so I'm gonna move this junk down here, and look, I'm gonna make this three positive. Now it's on the bottom of a fraction. Okay, so now let's expand this out. So look, this is negative two. Now look, I'm gonna write two g's. I'm gonna just like hold in my head that these are negative, right? I'm gonna just hold that in my head. But I'm gonna just, for right now, I'm just gonna kind of pretend they're positive. Okay, now I want this three times. So what does that equal? That's negative two times negative two. That's positive four times negative two, that's negative eight, right? That's negative, okay? Because negative times negative is positive, times negative is negative. G times G, times G times G, times G times G, that's a total of six Gs, and I'm remembering, oh, those are negative. And then this is H times H times H, three times. Three groups of three Hs, that's a total of nine Hs. And then of course, anything with a negative exponent says, oh, I'm not happy. I need to move. I need to go to the other side of the fraction. Now, does this have a negative exponent? No, that's a negative number. That's not a negative exponent. That negative number doesn't move to the top of the fraction, right? The only thing that's moving is this g to the sixth power.